Hello, this is Pinky, uh, Queen of the Road. And yes, I am on the road again, me and Big Lynn. I just want to come and do another quick video. This one's going to be a lot shorter than the previous one. And you may notice that I am in the same clothes because I'm still sitting here in Gulfport and getting ready to roll out in the next five minutes heading on into Atlanta. Um, people often ask me, why do I travel so much? First of all, I won't tell them none of their business. <laughs> but um, I can't do that. I can, but I don't. Um, for me, travel is therapy. Um, travel is uh, relaxing to my mind and my body. I have a lot of health issues that I deal with on a daily basis. And um, traveling gets me away from people and where me and God can be together. And now that I have this van, um, I can just rest in his presence uh, out on the road. And they often ask you, are you scared? Or who's gonna protect you? Well, I've been doing a good job for the last 58 years. So um, I think he'll keep protecting me. But I do have protection. I do have bear in the back and I got um, Peter. And I got slicer, so I got I got some protection in here. Um, haven't never had to use, never had problems since I've been traveling. Been traveling for several years, just haven't been documenting it. Um, I'm 58 years old. I have fibromyalgia. So I can't even say it. Fibromyalgia. So it's it's a disease. Like I eat my finger and I polish off. Um, one in five women have it, and I've been battling for decades with this and just got a diagnosis um, about eight years ago maybe seven 2013 it's when the diagnosis came but I've been battling it since 1990 um, but I'm 58 years old and have these issues in my body that most people think I just woke up and said hey I want this well, baby, life just happens. Um, just like with Job, life just happens. So it ain't nothing that I did wrong or didn't do. Uh, it's life just happens. Uh, you don't say nothing when people get high blood pressure. So people kind of um, blamed me for getting sick and uh, getting this illness, which brought my nursing career to an end on a dime on a dime I, I my job was there today and gone the next day um, so for me I would travel number one to ease the pain because the pain is constant 24 7 365 um, and then I would go places like to get in a jacuzzi and I know people would say well you got jacuzzis in Houston and for me I needed this kind of healing in the mind because you can't deal with or live with pain and uh, it does not affect you mentally. Um, and the only reason why I have not completely broke down upstairs is because he's keeping me. And I give him all the praise and the glory. Uh, so people ask, why do I travel so much? Number one, because it gives me healing and peace of mind. I cannot drive 24-7, 365. I wish I could. I just can't. Um, I had even played with the idea of just moving on a ship because it's peaceful. It's, it's, it's relaxing. And when you're in an alkaline environment uh, like the ocean, which is why I run to the water often when I'm traveling. Um, when you're in an alkaline environment, it brings peace to your body because the body, when you have fibromyalgia, is like... Um, uh, your nerves are on fire. You're hurting every single place in your body. Um, I was walking in the store a little while ago, and this whole left side from the hip down was just going. And I just had to make a quick exit out the store. Um, but yeah, I travel for for uh, the peace of mind because uh, it, it brings healing to my mind. And where the mind goes, the body will follow eventually. So, um, 58 years old, I've been dealing with this for over 30 years. Over 30 years, been dealing with this. So that is number one why I do it. Number two is because I'm a loner, have been a loner all my life. 
And um, from the time I was far back as I can remember, um, six or seven, I was always in a crowd, but off to the side. Um, I can go back to the house in which I grew up as a teenager, and it was a tri-level house. I was on the bottom level because that's where I chose to be, away from the rest of the family. Uh, and to this day, I'm still the same way, kind of just like in the family, but not in the family. It's, it's like you feel like you don't belong. So uh, in this journey, I have found people who feel the same way, that they feel like they're trapped somewhere where they don't belong. And it had become a point in time where it's got to be more to life than this. It's got to be more to life than just uh, living and paying bills, paying rent, paying uh, mortgages. Um, it's had, it, it just had to be more. I didn't want to just sit still. Now, I'll give you some, some statistics on the queen. Uh, st statistics. Fiber my algae messes with my speech. Um, I think I was about 54 and I started stuttering. Uh, I can be talking to somebody and I'll just look at them like, what are we talking about? Uh, fibromyalgia does that to you. Um, let me give you some statistics on me. Because uh, I, I, I did the numbers from head to toe on everything that hurt. And personally, in my personal journey, there's been 120 plus symptoms of pain in this little bitty frame. 120 plus places from migraines down uh, with the latest being pelvic pain where it feel like somebody kicked me in my private parts with a steel toe boot and doctors are confounded confused and crazy they don't they can't figure it out they they still can't figure out the fibromyalgia but with 58 years, I have pretty much been traveling since I probably, before I was walking, I know for sure. Because uh, I do have a picture of me as a baby being held in somebody's arm, one of my cousin's arms in Kentucky. So, mama left Texas when I was a baby. And that's when the journey began. I wasn't even walking before I was traveling. So, I've been traveling for 58 years. And... Uh, <laughs> My aunt, my, my mother's sister always say, Gary, you just travel so much. You're always on the go. I said, well, blame your sister. She started it. <laughs> but um, over the 58 years, I've had four marriages and no husbands. Um, they were all military and pretty much cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Uh, one was a drug addict. Uh, one was verbally and mentally and emotionally and spiritually abusive. One was physically abusive that eventually I found out he was abusing my kids. And the fourth one, we got married because he was mesmerized. Yeah. He said, you were just so beautiful. Like, dude, whatever. And he found out that, I don't know how you cannot know, that if you're seeing two women, that one of them get pregnant. And how could you not know that if she told you she was pregnant? So when I found out about her, she found out about me pretty much at the same time. I kicked him out go take care of your baby and uh when she got when he got back to georgia she kicked him out so i don't know where he is don't care um relationships in the last 25 years that have lasted over six months i don't know over 10 some of them don't even get past the day the first day um i have moved a total some people over there been, they act like they get ready to get married <laughs> i have moved a total of 38 times in 58 years wait well there's more yeah 38 times in 58 years i have moved uh germany four times moved six uh with uh my previous husband moved mm, seven times Five of them was without him. <laughs> I have been homeless uh, once. And most people would look at people that's living in their vehicles as homeless. We're not homeless. We're houseless. <laughs> we're debtless. We don't have the debt. 
Although I do have a cabin, it's off grid and it is now paid for. And it, uh, one of my kids gonna inherit it if you know whoever wants it. But <clears throat> yeah, we're not homeless, we're houseless. And you, you find people that cry because they live in a car, but it, you just realize the peace that you know my bed is right there. And if I'm here and it ain't conducive to my up 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 likings where I'm at, I just crank up and go. That is the beauty of this nomadic life. I just came in from Arizona. Prior to Arizona, I was up in New York. Uh, from New York to Arizona, from Arizona to Gulfport. Gulfport back to Texas. From Texas, I'm back in Gulfport. I love Gulfport and Biloxi. I just love this white sandy beach. Um, and those are some things about me um, of why I do this life. Um, all my friends, those that uh, called they self friends disappeared because they don't understand me and I don't blame them <laughs> I don't understand me sometimes um, psychiatrists don't understand me my doctor don't understand me and it's all good because you don't understand me either and you know how I know that it's because have you ever done something or said something and then you ask yourself, why did I do that? Because <laughs> you don't know why you do things that you do. Because you don't, we really don't know ourselves. The only one who really knows you and knows your, uh, me that is God. He, he knows all about us. He knows the thing we're going to do before it, way down the road. He knows over 58 years ago, I'll be sitting right here in Biloxi and Gulfport on this day. He knew that. So, reasons why I live this life nomad, travel by myself. Number one, um, there ain't that much room back there. Uh, number two, I don't want nobody all up in my face, um, um, in my breathing on me and stuff. And number three... I, I had my grandbaby last week, the, the three-year-old. And I eventually went ahead and put her up here. I, I brought her from back there and put her up here. And that little girl, her head was down there in in in, in the glove box, her head. Her, I don't know where her feet was because she moves too much. And because of the pain issues that I have, I, that was killing me. I'm like, girl, I'm about to punch you. <laughs> She's three. But you can't do that either. Especially when it's my baby. <laughs> but no. Um, it's just the pain of being touched. Where it almost drive you crazy. Because uh, you, you want to. You want to hold your babies. You want to hug them. But there are some days where hugs hurt. There's some stuff going on back there with that dumpster. I thought it was the birds lifting the dumpster. I didn't see, it. but I'm doing good. I I haven't ate but two, and uh, that's something new. Fingernails breaking, something with the fibromyalgia. But um, eating the fingernail polish off. I get them on, put it on real pretty, and the next day or the same day later that day, I get to biting it off. I don't understand it. But why do I do the nomad life? Because I love it. And I love getting out there, meeting new people. I met a, married, uh, a lady today named Mary down here on uh, the beachfront in a um, five, 500 or 50 C is a Fiat, little bitty, little bitty car. You could probably fit the whole car from here to the engine to my bumper, to the front bumper. You probably put her whole car in right here, and um, her and her puppy. And I had walked past her. I walked back. I said, "Are you are you stealthing?" She said, "Yes." Yeah. She said, "I was wondering, is is that your van over there?" I'm like, "Yeah." So we sat there and we talked a while. You know, you get to meet new people everywhere you go um that's doing the same thing you're doing people in campers people in cars people in vans uh there's a camper right in front of me uh people in their trucks people just want the freedom 
to move around. So uh, I went way over. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. But those are some of the reasons why I do uh, the nomadic life. Um, if you have any questions or comments, see, fibro, fibro fog hits me. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them below. Um, like, share, and subscribe, and hit that bell. Ring, ring, ring. Let me hear you ring. And let me know where some good camping spots are in, in different places, because I'm getting to hit the road for real. Uh, I'm going to Atlanta right now. Soon I crank up. Uh, gonna go back to Houston and then on spring break I'm taking the kids back to Georgia to see their daddy uh, yeah I'm just dropping them off and I'm gonna find me a camping spot so y'all be blessed okay